This is Robert Picardo, and you're watching The Planetary Post. Hello, and welcome back. This month, of course, the big news is that Juno successfully made it into orbit around Jupiter. I was honored to be invited to JPL on the evening of July 4th as the historic spacecraft arrived at Jupiter. Complete success. Orbit has been achieved. Now we go home and celebrate. I even had the chance to meet country music star Brad Paisley, who was there with his wife and children to cheer on the Juno team, proving my theory that all the coolest people love space. In the coming months, we'll be getting some incredible images from Juno, so stay tuned. Last month, we celebrated Asteroid Day on June 30th, a global campaign to educate people about asteroids and the importance of defending the Earth against impacts. The Planetary Society is a proud founding member of Asteroid Day, and our volunteers around the world hosted events in their communities to raise awareness about the asteroid threat. Big membership news! At the end of July, we are revamping the way our membership works, announcing new ways for you to attain the highly coveted, widely respected, brilliantly resplendent Planetary Bin. The journey to Mars made one giant leap forward recently as NASA tested the QM2. What does QM stand for? Quest to Mars! No? No, oh, it stands for Qualification Motor 2. Well, I like mine better. Anyway, the solid booster rocket completed a two-minute qualification test, which paves the way for the booster's use on NASA's Space Launch System. I can almost feel the rumbling now. Oh, come on. You're just shaking the camera the way they did on Star Trek. Cut it out! Cut it! In last month's episode, I mentioned LightSail's Day in the Life test. If you don't know what light sail is, it's a solar sail spacecraft. To help me explain how cool the physics of solar sailing is, let's ask the physics girl herself, Diana Cowern. Well, Bob, the cool thing about solar sails is that they're pushed by light. See, light doesn't have mass, but it has momentum, which means that when they hit you, you can feel that push like a pressure, and that light pressure pushes the solar sail along through space. Thanks, physics girl! We had a fantastic day up at Cal Poly, testing the functions of the next solar sail we're sending into space. Have a look. I'm here with Jason Davis, who is our outstanding blogger for the Planetary Society on all things light sail. Jason, it's a pleasure to meet you formally today. Nice to meet you. Can you tell me a little about this? We're going to go into the clean room and see mm -hmm. the spacecraft. Cool. And uh, we need to make sure that we're protected from any dust particles coming off of us and uh, accidentally damaging the spacecraft. There's nothing on my head, dust or otherwise, Jason, but I'm going to wear it. I am entering the clean room for LightSail. Here it is. LightSail has to perform all of its functions today. You have to yes. test it to make sure that when it's launched and when it's in orbit, everything is going to work out. Yes. Really, really cool. How cool is it to be in the CubeSat room at Cal Poly with the co-inventor of the CubeSat? This is, it's unbelievable. I mean, the things that people are doing with CubeSats, we never expected. And it's great to see the Planetary Society using it and, and demonstrating things that science has been wondering for decades, but it's always been too expensive to try. Time in, time out, date, purpose. Change the I'm not kidding. You can see now that Bill is inside the clean room. He's looking at the light sail up close. If you zoom in, you can see that the silver part there is the actual folded up sail. light sail spacecraft and we had a huge crowd following us and cheering. Uh, a few of them are still here. The first part of our day went really beautifully so I am optimistic that soon we will be looking at a fully deployed sail and I get to say I saw it once at least before it actually flies in space. It's about to happen. It's about to happen. Yeah. 
Sagan, this one's for you. Carl Sagan talked about a solar sail. 40 years later, we're going to fly it, so today was a good day in the life test. So I'm very happy that the sail deployed, but we do have a glitch on the other end of the deployment that we have to solve now. But that's what tests are for. Today is a big success, and not an unqualified success. They're going to look at the issue, they're going to address it, they're going to fix it. And the thing you have to remember now is that this beautiful sail will actually fly in space. I, for one, can't wait for the launch. As always, you can find more about the LightSail project by going to sail.planetary.org. And before we go, this month's Picardo's Pick, a recent image of Jupiter taken by Hubble where we can see some squiggly blue things. To explain what the heck those are, let's ask the Planetary Society's newest board member, Dr. Brittany Schmidt. Well, Bob, what's amazing about this picture is that it's showing the auroras forming on Jupiter. Energetic particles are being shot at the top of Jupiter's atmosphere by its magnetic field. And if you look really closely, those three blue little dots are the interactions of Io, Europa, and Ganymede with Jupiter's magnetic field. See you at the next board meeting, Bob. Thanks, Brittany, for explaining that extraordinary image. You know what makes me even more excited for the new images of Jupiter that Juno will be sending back soon. I can't wait. See you next month.